All right, y'all. Thus has begun my parents, my mom and Jamie's, a thousand month trek uh, gone. It's three months, and then they're never gone for the actual three months. And last time they went, <laughs> every time they go, there's always like a little something in the pantry that I'll nibble on, and I'm like, ooh, a little something left for me. Um, and then last year they went, and there was nothing. And I think in a video I said something along the lines of like, My mom left me nothing. I'm going to starve. So this time, she bought things specifically to leave here. And one of those things... <laughs> Heck yeah. Welcome back to Ever Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about The Princess and the Frog. The Princess and the Frog is a 2009 theatrical release about Tiana finding herself as a frog when she tries to kiss a frog prince to turn him back into a prince and they have to work together to undo their spell as frogs. It is directed by Ron Clemens and John Musker. Supervising animation, Ruben Aquino, Anthony De Rosa, Andrea Stasia, Eric Goldberg, Randy Haycock... Mark Henn, Duncan Marjorie Banks, Nick Ranieri, Bruce W. Smith, Michael Surrey. It is edited by Jeff Draheim, Draheim. Music by Randy Newman. And it is written by Ron Clemens, John Musker, and Rob Edwards. It is based off the book, The Frog Princess by Ed Baker, which is a spin on The Frog Prince, the classic tale. Shall we compare? Emma is a princess with a unique laugh whose favorite person in the whole wide world is her Aunt Christina. When she's betrothed to an awful prince, she runs away to the forest where she meets another prince who's been turned into a frog. She kisses him to reverse the spell but ends up as a frog herself. Emma and Prince Edric, the frog prince, set off to find a witch to undo the spell, all while a dog is chasing them. They make it to the witch's house only to find an awful woman who's trying to be the witch. They work together to set all of the animals free and escape the awful woman. Emma and Edric head for Christina who explains to them that Emma was wearing a bracelet to protect against spells and that's what caused it. The duo head back to the swamp to find the bracelet. Emma convinces the otter that stole the bracelet that she's a witch and she just barely gets to kiss Edric before the dog shows up to attack them. They turn back into humans and try to convince their parents they have found their true loves. The end. I would say they're similar only in the fact that Tiana turns into a frog with him and they have to find someone to try and undo the spell. Otherwise it's pretty different. They keep the like sentiment that she turns into a frog but it's still a prince only a princess can undo the spell because it's you know the way it's solved in this movie is once she marries him she becomes a princess and undoes the spell so it's kind of you know a, a little bit different in that aspect especially um but otherwise i mean it's cute it's a cute little concept and idea the film stars anika noni rose as tiana bruno campos as naveen keith david as dr facilier jennifer cody as charlotte labouf Jim Cummings as Ray and Michael Leon Woolley as Lewis. Home on the Range was originally the last traditionally animated film until Lasseter was brought on and they did the combination of Pixar and Walt Disney Animation. He rescinded that and brought back John, Cle John Clemens, John Musker and Ron Clemens because they had left the studio in 05 and said they had their pick of if they wanted it to be CG or hand-drawn. They decided on hand-drawn. So Lasseter and the team went out and rehired people and brought on old people that had like left because there was no more 2d drawing animation and brought them all on so they could be on for this film pixar and disney had actually both been working on a similar concept for movies pixar had been working on the frog prince disney had been working on the frog princess princess so they decided to combine them filmmakers spent 10 days in louisiana before they went ahead with this um, Clements and Musker decided that this would be set in America because there are plenty of other European fairy tales, quote unquote. And they premiered, like they did a teaser and announced the film in July of 2006 and it was at the time it was called The Frog Princess. Um, Tiana's name was Maddie at the time and her job was a chambermaid. And Dr. Facilier was Dr. Facilier and it received a lot of criticism for a lot of these reasons, Maddie they considered was too close to an M word that can be associated with 
black women of older times. Chambermaid was a little too, uh, and they didn't love that her love interest wasn't black, and they didn't love that it was set place in New Orleans soon after Katrina just happened, where it expelled a lot of the black residents, and they didn't love that the villain was a black voodoo witch doctor. Um, so in response, they changed her name to Tiana. They changed her career to a waitress. And then they brought on Oprah as a technical consultant. And they considered it a princess movie for people that don't like princess movies. And uh, Tiana is somewhat inspired by a real woman, Leah Chase, who was a hardworking waitress who ended up opening her own restaurant. Lady and the Tramp was kind of what Ron and John considered as the animation inspiration for this film. They wanted it to look as clean and as beautiful. It also, 2D animation allowed for more believability in characters like Louie, the alligator, or it also allowed them to take away a lot of the realistic parts of frogs that make them kind of unappealing looking. And then Alan Menken was on to do the score, but he was doing Enchanted at the same time. So John Lasseter said, hey, Randy Newman grew up in New Orleans and started as a jazz pianist. So I feel like we should probably bring him out of this project. And it ended up being a perfect fit. This had a $105 million budget made $271 million in the box office. Got an 85% Rotten Tomatoes reading. Warmth of traditional Disney animation makes this occasionally lightweight fairy tale update a lively and captivating confection for the holidays. It was nominated for Best Animated Film and Best Original Score at the Lost Boat, or Best Original Song, excuse me. It lost both. This kind of put a stop to hand-drawn animation. They originally, when they brought it back, were intending to release a hand-drawn animated film every two years. They did do the 2011 Winnie the Pooh, but then stopped after that. Big boo. Frozen was supposed to be hand-drawn, but switched to CG. And marketing around the time of this film got on Disney's butt about having Princess in the title because they knew it would deter people thinking it was only a girl's movie, which is stupid. This also was set up to fail because it came, a week, came out a week before Avatar. Brutal, brutal, br brutal. This is getting a ride and extra little area in the parks now. Um, it's also supposed to be getting a TV show where like Tiana explores New Orleans and it appeared, um, Tiana and all of them appear in multiple TV shows and video games. <laughs> Animation is gorgeous. It's so stunning. The switch in animation during Almost There. Beautiful. Amazing. I love it. The Firefly stuff, so gorgeous. The shot when they're getting married with all the woodland creatures and the sun and the grove. Oh my So beautiful. And then every like Dr. Facilier moment is also so stunning. Just like Friends on the Other Side is a great sequence. It's just beautiful. It's beautifully animated. This has more music in it than I realized because you got the opening song and like the whole like New Orleans opening sequence. But then finally we get Almost There, which is almost immediately followed by Friends on the Other Side, which I didn't realize Friends on the Other Side was so early in the movie, or at least feels early in the movie. And then you have a little bit of a break because the next one is If I Were a Human or If I, When I'm a Human Being, If I Were a Human Being, that one. And then we got Down the Bayou. Down the Bayou. That's a good one. Then we got Evangeline. Then we got Dig a Little Deeper. Um, and then, you know, our like closing out a bunch of reprises and the closing out Dreams Do Come True in New Orleans type stuff. Uh, but they're also good. I think, I think my favorite is Friends on the Other Side. It's just so good. You know how, let's see. Oh, um, Wish just came out and on TikTok, the villain song, King whatever the Mag whatever his name is, Magnifico, King Magnifico's song was getting reamed for like, you know, I'm always here when you need to vent, which like, it's not a terrible song. If you hear the whole thing, it's not a terrible song, but it is very pop produced, very simple lyrically, when we did have things like Hellfire <laughs> um, and Be Prepared, you know, like we had stuff like that going on. This, I think, is maybe like one of the last really good villain songs, except Mother Knows Best is fire, so, you know, but like, we're, we're still in an era of like pretty good villain songs, I feel like, so, Friends is on the other side, especially when he finally gets the handshake, and it's like the bump, 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 oh man, it's just so satisfying, it's so good. 
And then I think, I can't choose. I can't choose my second favorite. I think it's a tie between Dig a Little Deeper and Almost There. Cause Dig a Little Deeper is, you gotta dig a little deeper to find out who you are. Oh, it's just so good. It's excellent, excellent. Good job, Randy Newman. This might be a weird take and I don't care. I love Charlotte and Tiana's friendship. I think it's so sweet and so pure. I think the fact that it's never a problem in this movie that Charlotte is a spoiled, exorbitant, you know, whatever, and Tiana has to work double, frickle, whatever, to get everything she needs. The fact that they still care about each other, still love each other, and like it was so normal, like for Tiana to get like a bunch of stuff spilled on her, and Charlotte's like, oh, hang on, Prince Naveen, we'll be right back. Like the fact that like the thing she's been desperate for, this Prince Naveen, she's like, we'll be right back, and like. It's like, I have a dress that'll fit you perfect. And she's like, oh my God, you look so beautiful. And puts a tiara on her. Like the fact that Charlotte doesn't even think twice about doing that is so amazing. And then the fact that Tiana like thinks about Charlotte the whole time and is like, Charlotte wants to marry you. Charlotte wants to marry you. And like, oh my God. And like makes the beignets and is there doing the beignets. And just like, <sighs> it's just so sweet and so wonderful. And I love their friendship. And then at the end, when you're totally expecting, like I feel like everyone expects Charlotte to be like, Tiana, you stole my dream, blah, 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 blah. S just immediately, no thought to it. It's like, oh my God, you found true love. I'm kissing him for you so you guys can have that. Oh my gosh. And like goes to kiss, like, like I'm obsessed with their friendship and the kindness they show each other. It's just like so sweet and so emotional. I love it so much. Oh my gosh. I just love good female friendships. They're my favorite. Um, However, Lottie being spoiled <laughs> is so funny when he's like, no more dresses after this. Who wants a puppy? <laughs> like that just took me out. It was so, so good. And then her dad's lesson of wishing only takes you so far is so true. You really got to put in the work. You got to meet it halfway. Obviously her dad dies. So that is a parent death. We will be counting that. Um, I think it's interesting. They never dive into who outbid Tiana. I know it's not necessarily important, important to the meat of the story, but like, she really wants this building to do her restaurant and she gets like outbid, like someone is full on paying full cash and everything. Like you would think we'd learn who that was, but we never do. And then Mama Odie is fabulous. I'm obsessed with her. I think she's so wonderful. I've seen this before, by the way. It's just been a minute since I've seen it. I don't think I saw it in theaters, which is interesting. Um, and I get emotional at, um, Charlotte and Tiana being just so amazing at the end like when she wants to kiss her for her and um, all that good stuff. And then I also get emotional at Ray. Obviously, who doesn't get emotional at that part? It's so good. My girl. This, I will say, is probably the most Jim Cummings doesn't sound like himself. I had, there were only a few phrases he said where I was like, oh, Pete. He sounds a bit like Pete right there. But otherwise, um, I don't I don't hear him sounding like his normal like man self, and I don't hear him sounding like you know Pooh Bear or Tigger or Cheshire Cat or <laughs> you know his slew of other characters. <laughs> Favorite part? I'm torn between Friends on the Other Side and Charlotte saying she'll kiss him anyway. <laughs> least favorite part? This is tough. I don't have a least favorite part like embarrassing or filmmaking wise or anything like that. So like maybe like when Facilier gets his like talisman back and you're like, no, and you think he's going to win. But then she's like, mucus, <laughs> you know, so maybe like that. Recommend totally. Watch again. Totally. Obviously, it's very, very good. Uh, specific moments. Uh, the thing about good food is it brings people together. Made me emotional. And that's right the smack dab at the beginning. So amazing. Man catching beignets is iconic. Okay. I love a good beignet. I get it. I get it. The alligator scene where they're sitting on the rock. And then all the other like rock logs, whatever, turn into alligators. And then the one they're on turns into alligators. It's giving Lion King 2. They took that from Lion King 2. I don't care. They can claim they didn't. They did. That's a Lion King 2 reference verbatim. I'm just saying. And then Louie, I think a little thing that goes like, that is super fun is Louie helping Tiana and Naveen intimidate the people to get the bid for the restaurant. So good. I'm obsessed with that. Um... And I just love this. I think this is great. I think it does have a, a, a moment to talk about the whole 
black char main characters get transformed into an animal for a huge chunk of their movie. This is obviously a huge contender for that. This, uh, or people of color rather, um, but mostly black people. <laughs> Because we've had our fair share, we've got Encanto, we've got Raya and the Last Dragon, we've had our fair share of people of color who aren't changed anymore, but we had Brother Bear, we have Prince and the Frog, we've got Soul, you know, there's a fair amount of examples where people of color, but mostly black people, spend, when they are the main character of the movie, spend the majority of that movie transformed into an animal or something of the like. And so I obviously am not the right person to speak on that, but I am the one that can, um, you know, project and further their um, platform. So if you have an interest in that, by all means, please do your own research um, about how that's kind of an issue and um, how we'd like to see that change because it is true. I mean, Disney's got a track record of it as does Pixar because Pixar Soul that was their first main character that was black and he spent a majority of the movie as a soul or as a cat so and then there's even a part where like Tina's Fe Tina Fey's soul takes over his body so then it was a weird this movie is very excellent it's wonderful Tiana's so sweet she's so wonderful we love Tiana um and it's a really good movie dude like check it out uh, my final rating will be nine frogs <laughs> out of ten our total movie count is our parent death toll is <laughs> cry count's still the same i did not actually full-on cry i got emotional a couple times but never cried um if you want to keep up with movie i'm watching when follow me on all socials you'll find out what movie i'm watching when i put out videos every monday and friday and sometimes wednesday join patreon i got a tier starting at just one dollar we get every video a week early coupon code for merch uh tiers above that you get daily trivia, bonus content, monthly postcards, etc. Okay? Buy merch. Merch is great, merch is grand. You can still buy this one. <laughs> Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe. But I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so do you. And don't be Dr. Facilier about it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Transformation Central.